now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is the Rambo. I'm Alex Bennett. We go until midnight tonight. And our interview tonight, in the beginning, will last 45 minutes, so the citizen panel will take time to start. Ladies and gentlemen, that face you're looking at is a face <laughs> that we've only seen occasionally when we used to do Will Durst. Uh, and and, uh, and I ran one the other night, an old one, and there you were with your face in the picture and the two of you together. I should freeze frame it. It's a beautiful picture. It's just Aww. wonderful. Uh, you are the mom and dad of San Francisco comedy. We should make that be known. Uh, you have, uh, I don't know, every, every comic I ever talk to always talks very lovingly about you and Will. As, as kind of seeing them through hard times or seeing them through something or, you know, uh, just being there for them and being yeah. there for the whole community. Yeah, well, we never had real children, but we have plenty of comedian children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just easy to, you know, help take care of people because way back in the other century when we first started, there were just nothing but misfits and people who wouldn't fit into a, a, a regular job. Well, that's why they became comedy, comedians. Right. Yeah. That's why they became comedians. And San Francisco is a very loving culture as far as comedians go. And it's kind of like a band of thieves. Everybody takes care of everybody. And yeah, we just kind of became the people that you went to when you had a problem or you needed some help or advice or, you know, stuff well, like that. Well, you've also helped run Comedy Day in San Francisco, which is a free I, comedy concert. I am once the executive year. producer. That is correct, sir. You, you, you didn't start as executive producer, but you worked your way up. Oh, no. In the early days, I was just a... I think you, I think you do it for the money. I, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I do it for the money and the fame. <laughs> Uh, we also might mention that, that Debbie is one of the funniest people alive, okay? Ah, oh, you're so sweet. And and while you have worked as a stand-up... Well, you're, improviser. Y y yeah, you have done more improvising and being in groups and things like that. And uh, you've also appeared in a few, few, few movies doing voices. Well, Nightmare that is before. correct, sir. Right? I, I, I'm having a resurgence, actually in my uh, voice career from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, really? I, yes. I, yeah. I recently joined a, a, a very cool agency, OC Celebrities, and they do signings. And every once in a while, I'll get this big box in the mail with all kinds of photographs from uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. I did three voices in that. Mm -hmm. And I uh, I sit and it takes a couple hours or so and sign all of the stuff and send it back and then there's there's a nice check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, plenty 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 of gum gum yeah. and candy. Yeah. I can buy gum and candy. You it's were really you've been married to Will for how long? Jeez, what time is it Which now? Is as long as I remember. Uh, I believe it will be forty years. In November, forty years. Yeah. And I met you guys probably in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in the last century. Yeah. In the last century. <laughs> I've known you guys for a little less than forty years. So well, I, yeah, I, it's in the thirties though. It's in it's in the mid to high thirties. I yeah, would say. Yeah. It's yeah. a long time to know anybody, but when you get our right. When, well, and, get, and still both be walking the earth. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, let, let's talk about what's happened. Uh, about a year ago, exactly a year ago, uh, you know. Well, a year ago yesterday. Yeah. A year ago today, I had just climbed into bed after being awake all night long. 
<clears throat> seeing Will uh, transported to the UCSF uh, ICU unit. And I said, I got to go home and go to sleep. I, I, I haven't slept all night. And I had just fallen asleep when the phone rang. And it was you, actually. Yes. Yes. Because I was supposed to do a, 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 a call with, uh, with Will. Will, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and uh, he didn't. He wasn't there. And he yeah. was always punctually. He was always there. Yeah, you know, maybe a minute punctual. late, whatever. But this was getting to be ten, fifteen minutes. So I called your number. Yeah. And I called his yeah. number actually, and <laughs> yeah. you answered. Yeah, you called his number, <clears throat> and then you called the uh, the landline, mm -hmm. which is what what woke me up. Yeah. And I went, well, what the heck? Is there something going on? And uh, it was you. And I figured, well, I better call Alex and tell him. <laughs> the computer off, buddy. Not happening today. Yeah, not happening today. Yeah. L let's, let's back up a little bit. It, it, Will was working a gig, right? He was working a gig. He was working, uh, it was a big anniversary show for the San Francisco Mime Troupe. Wow. Which, who speaks? And uh, they're not mimes at all. But, uh, they had a big anniversary show in the Presidio here in San Francisco. Yeah. And he was part of the big show, and it was coming on midnight, and he still hadn't gone on yet. That's how big the show was. And I was at home. I had just come back from uh, Pacifica, Pacifica Spindrift Theater, mm -hmm. where I was directing a play. Yeah. And so I had just gotten home from rehearsal. As I good grief, I'll hang around and wait for him to come home. And I had just unwrapped our favorite snack, which is a giant double fudge uh, ice cream. Uh, what do you call those things? Uh, 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 drumstick, an ice cream dog. Uh, drumstick. drumstick. Oh, drumsticks. Yeah. Yeah, really yummy. And I thought, well, he's not here. It's his favorite snack. I'm going to sneak one. So I had just unwrapped it and was going to take a bite. And the phone rang, the, the landline phone. And, and I guess my cell phone had rung, but I didn't hear it. I had it on silent because mm -hmm. I was at rehearsal. Right. And uh, it was my friend, Diane Amos. Yes. Who is very famous. She's mm -hmm. a comedian in her own right. And right. she was also performing in the show. And she's also the uh, Pine Saw lady from all those commercials yeah. on television. And... It was her voice on the landline, and I said, you know, who calls the landline at 11 o'clock at night, really? Yeah, yeah. So I said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll let the, uh, the machine get it. And it was Diane's voice saying, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. Something has happened to Will, and I thought, oh, my God. So I picked up the phone, and she said, he just, here, I, I, we're backstage, and he's, he's fallen over. He fell over. And uh, it was the old... It was uh, the old cliche, is there a doctor in the house? And there was. One of the women who is an intern or she works with the Mime Troop said, my mother is in the audience and she's a doctor. I'll go get her. And she was looking at Will and she said, it looks like he's had a stroke. So uh, get an ambulance, right? They had called an ambulance and they asked me what hospital I wanted them to take him to. So I... I I, I told them to take him to St. Mary's because that's, uh, you know, I, I, we've been patients there before. And I said, great. Okay. So I threw the ice cream in a Ziploc baggie, threw it back in the freezer, uh, got redressed because I had put my gym jams on mm -hmm. and uh, rushed over to the hospital and met the ambulance there. And Diane was so, so nice. So, cause she had ridden with Will in the ambulance to the hospital. Wow. Wow. So he would be alone and she had his phone, his jacket, his car keys and, and, and everything. So, um, and then she had a friend who was waiting for a phone call to take her home. So I went into the emergency part of St. Mary's with Will, and he was very talkative. He said, I don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, I couldn't feel my feet. And uh, he had trouble. He said earlier that evening, he had no idea. This was the all-new, all-improved theater building 
that mm. it's uh, in the Presidio. And the Presidio used to belong to the military, for people who don't know. Right. It's an entire complex with housing and blah, blah, and they've always had a theater there. Well, they redid the theater, and he did not know where the theater was, so he just kind of parked his car and blah, blah. So he figured he would move his car closer to the theater, and after he'd moved his car, he was going backstage, back backstage, where he said his feet weren't, you know, going, his signals to the brain going, walk across the lawn to backstage entrance, and the feet did not want to move in that direction. And he just thought, well, that's kind of weird. I haven't, he doesn't drink any beer until after he's done performing. Right. So he thought, well, that's kind of strange. And then some, he gets walked back and got backstage and was trying to, because he had been texting me yeah. uh, before this happened, saying the show is so long. They just started after intermission. I haven't gone on yet. It's going to be a while. And then all of a sudden, he couldn't hold his phone. He was having problems with his hands and his motor thing. And he usually sits, stands against a wall to balance himself mm -hmm. backstage was kind of full and there were no chairs available so he's kind of leaning against the wall and then he just kind of slid down the wall and just fell over and and that that's when i got the phone call and um his blood pressure was very very high it was over 200 200 wow. 230 whoa whoa Whoa. Yeah, and, and there was a flurry of activity. All the doctors going, we're going to give him this, we're going to give him this. They started IVs and hooked him up in just bags and bags and bags of fluid to bring his blood pressure down mm -hmm. because they couldn't really do anything until that happened. And so I'm just sitting there watching the, the blood pressure go down and down and down. They did a CAT scan, and one of the doctors came in and said he's he's had a stroke. And... It's uh, it, it's not good, but it's not bad. He, he'd, uh, it was a, a stroke where a blood, a blood vessel broke in his brain mm -hmm. and created the, the, the high, the blood pressure thing there. And he said that there was bleeding on the brain and that there was pressure on the brain. The brain automatically, when there's bleeding and, and an injury, the brain will enlarge itself a yeah. bit to protect everything that's around there so the doctor said the brain is kind of swelling up and we don't know he, we may have to send him over to uc because saint mary's does not have uh the uh neurological surgery department that uc has in case they had to drill a hole in his head to relieve the pressure you say okay he says but we can't do anything until his blood pressure comes down so i sat there for good grief maybe two and a half hours or so watching the blood pressure monitor just slowly come down and they kept coming in and giving him more bags of fluid mm -hmm. and um and then i called our friend andy valver who at the time was living in germany will was supposed to leave uh for france the in two days uh, uh from 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 the seventh on the ninth mm -hmm. he was supposed to leave yeah and he and andy were going to do a tour that they've done a couple couple years in a row where he goes over there and andy sets up all of these one night dates and all of these places in france and germany <clears throat> and i figured okay it is you know, about two in the morning here. It's it's morning in Germany. I, I can call Andy. So I called Andy and said, you call off the tour, buddy, because it's it's not going to happen. And, and then I just it was just crazy. And about four in the morning, Will's blood pressure was stable enough that they could move him. So they got an ambulance and transported him. It, it's not even I would say maybe a mile. Mm hmm mile away from between St. Mary's and UC brought him up to UC got him in the ICU unit mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then I I sat there with him and he was talking this whole time it was like you know it's really weird I, I I can't feel my left side 
but why don't, why don't you say we just all get up and go have a beer? Yeah. <laughs> he, was talking, he was saying this to the doctors and everything. They're coming in and cracking jokes, doing all this stuff. And he said, oh, man, it's a good thing it was a benefit. Otherwise, the mime troupe is going to want their money back. And it was he was talkative and, and awake and aware of what was going on the whole time. He, of course, now doesn't really remember any of it. And uh, he doesn't remember a lot of the stuff. That I think happened. I think that's the brain's way of defending you that you don't remember yeah. it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So uh, I I stayed in the ICU unit till about maybe seven thirty, eight o'clock, and I said, "Look, I, I got to go home. I, I have to. He's here. He's safe. You guys are taking care of him, and there's not much I can do now." Yeah. So they said, okay, now you're do. saying through all of this, he his speech was fine. His speech was fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was a little slurry, mm -hmm. but you know maybe he had a like after a few beers. Yeah. You know, but it was totally understandable. You could right. understand everything, every single. Well, word they also probably saying. had some drugs in him and things like that too. So, right, you know. right, right. Just to, so, to stabilize so, him and that that all that stuff, and then. Uh, when did you come to realize how, how serious it was? Uh, when I was, my friend Judy came over to drive me to the Presidio so I could pick up his car. Mm -hmm. And while I'm in his car, one of the doctors called me from UC and said, we're going to have to drill a hole in his head because the, the pressure on his brain is not stopping. And we've got to get a lot of this blood out. And it's a... So they, they call it an EVD. It's an external ventricular device. This I sounds think. this sounds like a horrible thing, but from what I understand, you can actually burrow into the skull, and they do it all the time during operations. Yeah. So and they keep the patient awake while they do it. So how much pain can there be? You know. Yeah, I, I don't know. It I, sounds I disgusting know. to us. Okay. Yeah, it, it's totally bizarre, but he needed to get my authorization and my okay to do it. And I said, well, he'll die without it. So go ahead. I, you know, I'm going to bring his car home and jump in the car, go back. Of course, I could not be in the room when they were drilling a hole in his head because yeah. it's kind of a surgical procedure, even though it's yeah. bedside. So, well, now uh, whenever you have an argument with him, you can go, what do you got? A hole in your head? <laughs> yeah and it, so they drilled a hole in his head and they put in the the evd and it's like a little brush thing mm -hmm. that just is constantly moving and it, it just clears all the detritus and then there's a little uh, hose thing that comes out it's really tiny everything is very small and it goes to this little bag that's hooked up to all of this you know machinery mm -hmm. in the back and uh, that way all the blood can con come out yeah and it's it's uh there's certain levels that they can put the drain at and the doctor explained it to me it's like a wall that is keeping you know the water right out right so you know if, if it goes over the wall then they have to hire they have to make the level higher but that uh the drain was in his head for two weeks and uh, so for two weeks, I would go every day and sit with him. And then uh, I, of course, am still directing a play. So I would have to come home, scarf some dinner, kind of uh, decompress, and jump in the car and drive to Pacifica and, and direct the show. Yeah. And uh, after two weeks, they did, okay, we're going to take the drain out, see what happens. And it usually, if the patient is cogent and can s still speak yeah. and is okay after 24 to 48 hours, then the drain stays out. Well, he developed an infection. Oh. And it, it, it was not good. It was one of the <sighs> scariest. I, I thought, you know, besides thinking I was going to lose him the night he had the stroke, I thought I would lose him again. I walked in and he had... A temperature was so high, it was 102, 103, and he was so cold, he was shivering so violently, I thought he would shiver right out of the bed. And he was just shaking. It was just, you know, yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. And 
was not good and I was trying to hang on to him and and he just didn't look good and they had all of these things they put this air mattress underneath his body that circulated uh, cool water through the coils to try and cool him down they had bags of ice under his arms and they had and this was October it was kind of cold and they had a fan going in the room so I was freezing but he was just hot 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 and and yet he was telling me he, he just felt so cold and they were trying to keep him as warm as possible but as cold as possible which was so bizarre and it was just one of the most horrible things I ever had to sit through. Was well, just, it, it, yeah. it's horrible to sit through it, but it's worse when it's somebody you've loved for 40 years. Yeah. You know, and that you've had hard. this wonderful, complete, real, I mean, the two of you had like an umbilical cord stuck to each other, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those relationships where sometimes we don't even have to speak. You know, when couples are together for so long, yeah. you almost become one person. And it was just horrible. And I, I just really have to give big props to every single nurse that I ever ran into yeah. at the UCSF ICU. Were oh you, were you during this time when he was really cold? Were you, you still, you were still in fear of losing him, right? Yes, yes. I thought if the temperature doesn't come down, because I know that your brain totally fries when your temperature gets too high. And they were doing everything that they could to just keep his temperature stable and to try and come down a bit. Yeah. And it was just, it was horrible. It was horrible. And all the nurses were just so good. It's like, this is, this is really bad. <clears throat> and I know it's terrible for you to sit and see him like this. Uh, but we're doing everything that we can. And we've done, we've been, we've seen this before. We've had other patients that have gone through this and, you know, just he, we know what off. we're doing. We if know he can get his yeah. temperature down. He'll be fine. Yeah, and so, so they got his temperature down. I, yeah, I they assume. got his temperature down, and and the whole thing, and and then he was supposed to leave the ICU. And the day he was supposed to leave the ICU, they realized he had developed an infection in his brain. So they said, "Well, we can't really uh, let him out." So he was there for another week. Mm, in the boy. ICU. So that was three weeks in the ICU. And they figured they, they had, and then he had to go through all kinds of stuff because they had no idea where the infection was, what it was, all these tests, a spinal tap, needles, big, all this. Mm. And it was like, oh my, my poor baby, my poor sweet baboo, he's going through all of this crap and there's nothing I can do but just sit here and, and hold his hand. And uh, I was try I was sitting on his left side mostly because when uh, he had a right side brain aneurysm, the, the the stroke was on the right side, which means his left, left side of his body was paralyzed. And they wanted him to focus his right eye to, to move to the left. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, you want to get that function back as soon as you can. So well, let, me, let, me ask, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, when did you first realize the full extent to the stroke because all through this you didn't know whether it might just go away or you know whatever you know yeah it, it was difficult i would say um he was actually released from uc because they figured they had the infection under control and he seemed to be fine and he was released back to saint mary's to their acute rehab unit Mm -hmm. uh, they have one floor where there are patients and there's, they call it acute rehab. Uh, they work you three to four hours every day, you know, five days a week mm -hmm. just to get you back up and, and, and your limbs working again. And that's when I realized, because I would go uh, early enough because I wanted to sit through his rehab sessions to see, you know, what exercises they were trying to do. And that's when I realized he couldn't sit up by himself. Uh, his, his left arm and his left leg were just not working at all. And there was the, the social worker that came through and she says, you know, we see a lot of cases like this and people either get better or they don't. And she said, that's the reality of it. 
and we'll go, we're, we're going to work with him as best we can to try and make sure that he can walk out of here. And I said, okay, that's, that sounds good. That to would me. sound like a good idea. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. And I guess it was maybe the, the ninth or 10th day that he had been at St. Mary's when, uh, my, my partner, my improv partner, Michael Bossier, and mm -hmm. his girlfriend went to go visit Will, and I was going to go visit and see them as well. And Michael called me and he said, there's something wrong with Will. He's not communicating. He's not, he's kind of staring off into the distance. And I thought, oh, now what? So I jumped in the car and I got over there and he just wasn't, he wasn't there. You would talk to him and he wasn't really answering. He wasn't communicating. And I called, and this was, I guess, it was a holiday weekend. I'm not quite sure what it was. It was a, it was a Sunday, mm -hmm. anyway. And the, the doctor was not there. And I said, you, he needs to go get a CAT scan right now because there's something wrong. And you need to get a doctor here right away. And then you hear the loudspeaker of the whole hospital. Hey, we need a doctor. And we got to code something. And a couple minutes later, I look up and there's a sea of white coats standing in the hallway. Oh, <laughs> it's just every single doctor, it seemed, had come to the room. And they gave him a CAT scan. And uh, the nurse said, you better clean out his room because he's not coming back here. Obviously, there's something wrong. And the infection had never gone away or it came back. So he had to be reached. And, and this is when I thought I would lose him again. The next morning, the phone rang. My phone rang at 730 in the morning. And it was a nurse at St. Mary saying, well, we've got him in our ICU. And he's on a ventilator. And I thought, what the, huh? And she says, well, it's just easier for him to have this machine help him breathe and we can concentrate, but he's going to have to be tr transferred back to UC and have another drain put in his head. And I thought, good God, that means they will have drilled a hole in his head twice. So uh, I, I went to UC because they transferred him back over and he was back in the ICU. And he stayed there for another six weeks in the ICU there. And, and that was, that, that was hell. And he, she just, I, I was joking with him. I said, you look like a character out of the movie Dune. He had all of these <laughs> wires and plugs and all of these things. They put in a, what they call a pick line. Uh, so they didn't have to keep stabbing him all day, every day for uh, blood work it's it's a line that they put in it's it's a permanent line yeah. that goes into your body into the vein and that and then it's got all kinds of little things sticking out of it so they could just attach the syringe or whatever right put the medicine in or yeah. take blood out yeah yeah wow and he wasn't in any oh. kind of he couldn't have solid food uh, because they were afraid he might choke so they were, they put a, th a tube in his nose that, and oh, I watched him put it in oh and that's pretty gross. It's pretty ugly. And it goes in your nose all the way down to your stomach. Uh, so they could, and then they had this big sack of whatever. And, and then they shove, a, they, they shove, they say, shove, they shove, hey, I'm having yeah. the steak. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say they shoved the steak in there. Yeah. yeah and right. it was the liquid food that yeah. that he was being fed. So, so six weeks in ICU. Yeah. They so finally, it was a grand total of nine weeks, he said. So finally they let him out. They finally let him out after, you know, drilling another hole in his head and putting another drain in. And every day I would come in and uh, I would take a picture of the machine, which showed his vitals. His sister and brother live in Arkansas, mm -hmm. and they were concerned, and they couldn't get out. And his sister is a speech pathologist, but she's married to a doctor, and his brother is an anesthesiologist. <clears throat> so I would come in every day and take a picture of the, uh, the machine showing his vitals and the little bag that had all the stuff that was coming out of his head, and I would text it. To his sister and brother going okay this is today and and they would look at it with their medical eyes and brains to go okay that's okay that's all right that's okay or 
Yeah. It's a little cloudy. Yeah. The bag's a little cloudy today. So let's and let let's get to he finally gets out of the ICU. Finally gets out of this the ICU. This is about when. Oh good lord. Uh it was holiday season, I would say, because we spent Thanksgiving. He mm -hmm. was there for Thanksgiving. Okay. It was probably the end of November, mm -hmm. beginning of December. Okay. So and we're slowly, so now he's out of the ICU, but we're slowly coming up on COVID. Very, very slowly. He uh, was transferred to what they call a SNF. Hey, uh, uh, <laughs> You've learned all these medical terms. I, I, I know more now than I really needed to. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, I, think I think I think this year for a present I'll send you a stethoscope. <laughs> yeah, or 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 the uh, you know the code to that little uh, medicine cabinet that's in every room in ICU. He's yeah. like, what is it? What's the code today? You know, to open any of the drawers for any supplies or drugs, you have to have the code. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they, he was transferred to what is one of the best skilled nursing facilities in the country, uh, the Jewish home. The, but not, that's not the Jewish home for the age where my mother was. Uh, it, this is on Silver Avenue. I th yeah, I think that's I think yeah, it's yeah, the same yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's, a, it's a huge facility. I know. And, and they have a, a rehab department, oh, and okay. it was one of the best. Right. It was like the top of the list. Because that's where my mother was when she was got old. She used to ask yeah. me why am I in the, why I'm at the Jewish home for the aged, and I said because of two reasons: you're Jewish and you're aged. Because <laughs> you're aged. She was going yeah. on a hundred, you know. So yeah, yeah, it's an excellent facility. Uh, everybody there was 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 so great and so nice, and yeah. he was in the, the rehab place. building. Yeah, and he would get rehab every day. Mm -hmm. uh, which was great, but it was just so slow and very hard to see that he just, he needed help with everything. He couldn't get right. out of bed. He couldn't. And during this entire time, the right side of his body, which was perfectly good, uh, was very weak. Uh, through this entire thing, this entire year, he's, he's down to 150 pounds. He lost over 50 pounds wow. during this whole thing. And his right side got pretty weak. And then, you know, there was Christmas. His sister and brother took turns coming out from Arkansas to visit for the holidays, which was really nice. Yeah. Uh, so they got to see him in person and see what was going on. And, and then I got spelled for a few days mm -hmm. where I could just sit at home and, and rest my brain. Uh, and, and then, you know, watching the TV was kind of like, well, there's this thing going on in China. We don't know what it is, but it doesn't. <laughs> and I thought, oh, great. It doesn't sound good. And you know how people love to travel. And, uh, and then it got to the point where they, uh, the Jewish home said, okay, we have to take some precautions because everybody in here is ancient. And we can't have anybody bringing anything in. So I drove up to the little kiosk one day and the guy goes, I'm sorry, we're not letting any more visitors come in. And at this point, I was preparing to move Will to an assisted living facility because, you know, uh, Medicare goes so far. Yeah. And uh, thank God that we have the knock on wood. We have the Medicare and supplemental insurance. So it's a hundred days and it was, we were coming up on 90 some days and I had to move him because it would be a bazillion dollars every month just to keep him at the Jewish home. And right. I would have, right. I could, because right. you know, she, the rehab gym was right across the hall. Dang it. Well, in the days when my mother was there, it was $7,000 a month. And but what they did is what was so great about them is they said, you'll pay that seven hundred seven thousand dollars a month. Till she's run out of money, and then we don't throw anybody out of here. So she'll be here on our dime. Yeah. You know. Well, that that because she was living there. And Will yeah. was just a patient. Yeah, yeah. So this was this was totally different. So so and so, it was so about now, six yeah. grand a week to keep him there. So now you've gone through this COVID thing, and I guess all rehab is stopped, right? All rehab had stopped. Uh, he was still getting rehab while he was there. 
because uh, it was March at this point. Yeah. And I was getting the his his room ready to at the assisted living facility where he was going to go. And I totally missed his birthday. I couldn't even visit him on his birthday. Mm. And uh, I got a, a photo, uh, Samantha, who we call Sam, mm-hmm. and um, and Patrick, who were his PTs, mm-hmm. his, his therapists over there. They got him a little cupcake and they had little hats that they bought. And they took pictures of them celebrating Will's birthday and, and texted them to me, which was very sweet. And very nice. And uh, and then the day before my birthday, because we have a birthday like six days apart, uh, I moved him into the place where he is now. Yeah. And I could not get in. I still can't. They're still not letting visitors into the building. It's gotten to the point where you can go visit. They have an outdoor courtyard. Okay. And you have to make an appointment. And supposedly you get 30 minutes to visit. Uh, depending on how many people are visiting that, and then they space out the visitors, yeah, okay. and, uh, yeah. and they've got it all. So you're you, you, you're getting to see him now on some. Well, I don't go visit per se uh, up until the point where they opened the courtyard. Mm-hmm. His room was on the first floor, so I was doing window visits. <laughs> I would go, and you know, every Tuesday, and I call it laundry exchange day. Because I would pick up the dirty laundry, bring the clean laundry, and then I would go outside the building yeah. and uh, stand at the window for about an hour, and, and we would visit. And now that uh, the rehab centers had opened again, mm-hmm. he's been going to rehab for, I'd say, hmm, maybe three months now. Okay, so now my okay. question, there are two questions here. Yeah. Because uh, usually when I do these interviews on this program, I do 15 minutes. But this thing has been so fascinating. We're uh, up to 36 <laughs> minutes already. Yeah, um, good. Uh, Welcome to my life. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, plus, you're, you're delightful. Uh, no. uh, that's why everybody in San Francisco loves you. Okay. <laughs> and that's why they came to your rescue. To begin with, you started up a GoFundMe. I, yes, I did. And uh, so far, you've raised how much? Uh, I think today we're up to 113,000. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fabulous, but you consider that we've spent about 45,000 of that so far mm-hmm. just on his room. Uh, Medicare and the supplemental is picking up all of his medical stuff, but the room rent is on us. Plus, there are things you're going to need in the home once he's let go yes. you got to put in yes. uh, i i have to investigate i wrote down all of these names of uh stair lift companies and now i have to do yeah. some due diligence and research them so first of all i want you to tell them they can go to gofundme and go to will durst i guess right yes it's uh uh well just you just go to go go to gofundme and put in will durst yeah, and it's will dash durst dash needs dash yeah. your and dash whether, it's fi- whether it's fifteen bucks or fifteen thousand, uh, yes, they need will. every every penny they can get because I know what medicine costs these days. And yeah, thank God you got the supplemental, although you still got to pay for the damn supplemental, right? You know, right? Yeah. 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 Well, uh, yeah, because the Medicare will take eighty percent. The supplemental takes care of most of the rest. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, yeah, I've got to pay for the his uh, the copay on his medication because he's still getting a lot of medication. Oh god! And uh, there's that, and then I'm gonna have to freaking ADA the bathroom. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to put grab bars up and, and get a, an accessible toilet. And yeah. now yeah, here the, the, here's the big question: Where does he stand right now? Right now he is. I light years from where he was, mm-hmm. but in, in terms of being able to take care of himself and move on his own, still not happening. Uh, his left hand, he can move his fingers pretty well and mm-hmm. bend his wrist. And uh, occupational therapy is the upper body. Physical therapy is the lower body. Oh, I didn't know that. So he just started occupational therapy. Uh, a month ago mm-hmm. so we're trying to get strength back in his arm and when you don't when you have a stroke and you lose your left side you get what they call a shoulder drop so the muscles just completely relax here so you got nothing you got nothing up here 
Yeah. And they're trying to get these muscles back and, you know, working on his shoulder muscle. And, and so uh, his uh, OT sessions are mainly just trying to get strength back in his arm. And once he gets the strength, you know, he, he'll be able to move the arm. Yeah. The leg is, is much, much slower to mm -hmm. come along because he was in ICU for such a long time and not moving. And uh, UC's uh, therapy department was so stretched, stretched so thin. Mm -hmm. And the ICU unit uh, that he was in for six weeks uh, was so big that, you know, it's like, well, I see the therapist. They're down the hall. They may get to you today. They may not. So he literally didn't have any therapy. My question now is, what is what's the prognosis? I mean, we're, we're probably never going to see a full recovery. No. No, his left leg, the knee is having problems uh, having full extension and straightening all the way. Mm -hmm. uh, we went back to UC to get uh, some Botox shots because there's nothing you can do about knee wrinkles. You, you can't do a knee lift. Uh, <laughs> Botox uh, shots to try and relax the muscles, his calf muscles, his knee muscle, the ankle muscle, just yeah. to try and yeah. get some elasticity back in his mm -hmm. leg because he had kind of a, a curvature going mm -hmm. on and the knee is kind of permanently bent and it may just stay bent uh, and he'll have to learn how to walk like that. Wow. Uh, but <laughs> so far, the prognosis is, is, is good. How's his speech? His speech is fine. His speech is great. He, he you know, because he did have the droop going on for a while, but it, it's gone. It was the first thing to disappear. Uh, he so he, he has he he's completely speaking. He's cognizant. He knows what's going on. He's yes. aware. Um, so basically, he can do a podcast. <laughs> basically, <laughs> he could. He yeah. just doesn't want to be. Uh, you know, like uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> he's got all of these things available to him, but it's not the way he's used to working. Mm -hmm. So and he doesn't want his laptop there because he can't type uh because the the left hand still really isn't working and that's how he works i got him an ipad and i said look there's a thing in there called pages and you can type on your ipad but he doesn't want to do that and i said look, okay you got voice memos you could just you know press the button there and record yourself talking and then i could transcribe whatever you have and he doesn't want to do that he can also dictate you know yes yeah. Yes. I mean, that's how I do most texts, for instance. Is yeah, yeah, right. But that's not how he works. He said, that's that's not how well, I write. Well, you know, I got to tell you, I hate to I hate to disappoint him, but maybe he's going to have to find new ways to work. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I said. I said, you know, if if you have, we're just going to have to figure this out. If he wants to keep doing what he does, which he always considered himself a writer over anything. He always very yes. proud of that. Uh, this... He does have the ability to do that on some levels. There, there are the, the, the mechanics to be able to handle that. Right. So. He's, he's got the tools. He just has to come to the realization in his head that this is what he has to work with. And I think mm -hmm. in some ways he doesn't want to do that because it might be admitting defeat or thinking that he can't get back to where he was. I, I have no uh, doubts that he'll be able to type again for sure. Uh, the walking may be a bit of a problem, mm -hmm. but that's you know. Well, he, may, he won't do sit. He won't do stand up. He'll do sit down. Yes, he'll do sit down comedy. <laughs> you know, we'll, Which, you know, we'll, we'll all we'll all forgive the guy in the wheelchair. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, our goal right now is to get him into a walker, and then uh, once he can get into a walker, he he can come home. Hey, listen. I would love to do this again with you. You are you are a delight, sure. and we love That's hearing it. the updates on on Will. But more than that, it's just a pleasure to talk to you. This and it's is, good to it, see you. I've got to say, this is probably the most she and I have ever communicated outside of being in a radio studio. Yeah. Uh, in in our lives, and uh, uh, you know, you've been wonderful to him, and your marriage is just it's one of those wonderful, wonderful love stories. You know? I, I found my best friend in the whole world, and I was lucky enough to get to marry him and hang out. And then we have this thing that we got from a film. It's like, we'll, we'll, we'll be together till the wheels fall off. You'll be happy to know you're the longest interview I've done on this program. 
Wow. Because wow. I think it's worth every single second of it. Ah, well, I feel honored. And I have been so busy just, well, A, being the Durst Co. franchise. I, I have to do everything now. Mm -hmm. uh, and just being an advocate for him and his well-being and making sure he gets the rehab and the care that I think he deserves and that he needs to get better so he can come home that I have it. I've been lax a bit on, you know, just letting his, his fans and everybody who knows and loves him know exactly what's happening. Yeah. So I, I want to thank you for, for letting me have this <laughs> platform. <laughs> <laughs> can we do this? Can we do this again sometime soon? I would yeah, love yes, to. Yes, of course. It'd be a pleasure. Yeah. It would be fun to talk to you anytime. And stick around after the interview for a second. But I want to thank you. This has been yeah. Debbie Durst, ladies and gentlemen. Will Durst's uh, better half, as they say. And uh, a story yeah. which I think everybody needs to hear. And because Will was a regular on this show, a story they want to hear. Uh, yes. And, and Will would want me to tell everybody to please stay safe, wear your mask, look both ways before you cross. And for God's sake, vote. Just vote. We don't care who you vote for. Just go out and make your voice heard. Because... Mainly because Will has a pre-existing condition. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank and... you, Debbie. I appreciate it. Love Thank to you. Thank you, Alex. Love You're you. the best ever. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. I hope you don't mind us taking that long a time to, uh, to run that. Um, uh, we started talking, and it was so good, and it was so interesting, and it was so, and it, it, I, it, it just it was something I wanted you all to hear, Okay. And um, uh, we will do it again with her, too. I mean, she's a lovely, lovely woman. They're lovely people, okay? And they're, they're uh, probably two of the most beloved people in the San Francisco comedy scene. And I just wanted you to uh, get to know them, just uh, get, get to know her. She's, she's very talented. And uh, I wanted you, she's funny, too. She makes me laugh. Just. Her looks and the things she does, she's wonderful. Anyway, let's go to our citizen panel who has, it knows it's go getting late tonight. Uh, and uh, so um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll just uh, uh, go to them. Here they are. Here are, here are the ones that are there so far. Jeff and, uh, oh, where's Charlie? Uh, hasn't joined yet. He'll, he's out there. Uh, Jeff, move your camera a little bit so we can see your face. All we get is your eyes. There we go. See, everybody should everybody should uh, learn framing their picture. It's uh, very important. Anyway, hello everybody. How are you, uh, Jeff? Well, I got a lot to. I don't know about a lot to say about this. Well, you had a stroke yourself, so I you did. you I know did. the process. And I was like reliving it. Reliving it was it? Were you that bad off? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Although physically, my arms and legs, I didn't have much problems there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I st I still can't read full sentences. Okay. I, I can read word by word. Mm-hmm. So it's a little function. Yeah. Problem that. I Brown. So you know so, what he's going through then. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I went through this all. How long? Uh, how, uh, how bad? How bad off were you when it happened? Well, because you know, all of a sudden I had this tremendous headache, mm -hmm. and uh, my wife uh, drove, got in a car and drove to the hospital. And uh, next thing I know, uh, they're drilling a hole in my head. Yeah. Okay, same thing, right? To release the pressure. Right. Oh. And it wasn't just a hole. It was a big slot. Oh, really? It's it's about that long. Well, they wanted to use you as a filing cabinet. You know? They wanted to make sure that they found <laughs> Trump, Trump can't complete full sentences, and he's never had a stroke. Yeah, yeah. That uh, we know of. Lucky, yeah, lucky. That's right. Yeah. 
Uh, we've been joined by Tom Yamaguchi. Hello, Tom. Hi. Yeah, I really appreciate the, the interview. Unfortunately, I had another meeting and joined it uh, just after 8 o'clock my time. But I really, I, I definitely want to go back and hear the, the whole thing from the beginning. Well, all of this will be up. available on YouTube oh, and yeah. it'll be also be available on Facebook as well. So yeah. yeah, oh, I know. And I definitely tend to do that. But what I did here, I really, really appreciate recognizing that yeah, this is the, the first anniversary, or at least yesterday was the first anniversary yeah, yeah. of the stroke. I yeah. thought it was, I thought it was Tuesday, uh, I thought it was, um, what, Tuesday, but it turns out it was, uh, it was yesterday. It was the 7th so. of October of last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and uh, uh, she gave me a way to get a hold of him, to actually talk to him, so I'm going to do that. I'm not going to put him on the air or anything, but I want to, I'll get back to you and let you know how we, how I how it looks well, it'd be to me. great it would be great if if you could get if you know if he feels comfortable of course i to, think to at this on. point i don't think he would want people to see him yeah. okay i mean it, it, it still sounds like he's you know i mean he he can't do anything for himself i mean he can operate an ipad that's what i found out and that it, he does talk to her by facetime so uh, I, uh, I'm going to FaceTime him, and uh, uh, she told me how to get a hold of him mm -hmm. on FaceTime, and, you know, I'll talk to him. I'm, I'm going to wait a day or so, and then I'm going to do it, mm -hmm. you know. How long has it been since he had stroke? Uh, a year. One year. Exactly. Yeah. One year. Exactly. Uh, but, you see, he, after, unfortunately. After a year, I actually went to work one day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you see, unfor fortunately for you, there wasn't a period of time where there was a COVID crisis. That's he right. hit it during a COVID crisis, and there was a whole period of maybe six months there where they couldn't do anything yeah. except <laughs> attend to him medically. But so far as uh, rehab and things like that, eh, yeah. not really uh, a possibility. So, uh, you know, but we love Will and I love her. And anybody, that, you know, every time I ever talk to like Bubbles or, Pearl or Kravitz or any of those people I talk to, they're always saying, how's Will doing? How's Will doing? You know, because they really care about Will. Because I said they're kind of the mother and father of San Francisco comedy mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. they, they embraced all these comics and helped them if they needed help or gave them, you know, some suggestions if they needed it. And they were always there. And uh, they're just two of the most lovely people in the world. And when this happened to Will, I was just, you know, it, it, did, not, it not, did not hit me well, you know. Mm. But I wanted you people to hear it because you used to hear him on this program and you haven't wow. seen him for a year. And I felt that, and when I was, uh, I've been uh, uh, doing messaging, uh, text messaging with her. And I, uh, the last time I did, I said, Wait, do, you, do you know how to use Zoom? She says, I use Zoom all the time. I said, well, let's do a, <laughs> let's do a thing. And so I thought she'd come on and we'd do 15 minutes and she'd say, here's how Will's doing and thank you very much, Debbie. And then she tells this whole literal drama. I mean, it was like um, a watching a, a TV show, listening to her talk. And she does it in such a great way. And I was just delighted to to be able to, to have her here tonight. And we're going to have her back on again. Uh, I just really I really enjoy her, and uh, it's it, it it's nice to see that. I hope that we all have people in our lives that, that we know. Pamela mm -hmm. loves you enough, Jeff, to go through that, right? Yeah. Uh, it's that kind of kind of love that really makes you kind of gulp a little bit, you know? And mm -hmm. she's stuck by him like, you know, a fly on pence. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she tells a good story, too. I mean, yeah. I was, like, riveted. I was Me just, too. like, staring at the computer just listening to the story. Well, we, wow. it, it, well it, mm -hmm. it's hard to believe. I mean, did you go, you, you went, you say you went through it much like he went through it, right? Jeff, I Absolutely. mean, in other words, there wasn't a part there that you said, oh, well, that didn't happen to me, you know, <coughs> although there, you didn't have, as you, as I said, you were lucky because you didn't have the, the coronavirus. 
he's unlucky because right. he did, and right. it took him out of the rehab for a certain yeah. amount of time, and a lot of things atrophy if you don't, you know, if you don't do that. But hopefully, you know, I mean, you know, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Before I pass off this mortal coil, he'll be on a stage somewhere doing stand-up or sit down or something, mm -hmm. you know. But she says he speaks perfectly. There's no problem with his speech. That's wonderful. So that's, that's you know, that's one very important thing because he is a comic after all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I, I didn't ask her here, but I, in talking to her, I found out he still watches uh, all the news and he's keeping up on everything and he knows what's going on. Which yeah, I would think I would think the stroke. blessing of a stroke is you wouldn't know right now what was going on. Yeah. Wake know. me up when it's over. <laughs> Wake me up when it, Wake know, me up in January 2021. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. T t bring me out of the coma when it's when it's all over. And exactly. you don't have to put up with it. Uh, but uh, you know, it, I, 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 and I think it's a heartening story for people out there to hear. So, and we got a lot of people who listen to it too. We got a lot of viewers. A lot of viewers on that. Good. So, uh, you know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I got this in the mail today. I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah. I, I showed you mine the other day. I have, uh, we have yeah. two, two of them over here. Yeah, I should I should get a few more in the mail. So that's good. At least I got the first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a few I'll more. Turn you, mine in. <laughs> I'll turn the others in, other, other drop-offs. <laughs> It, it's funny. They kind of all look alike. That looks kind of like the New York ballot. I guess there's a regulation yeah. for the ballot or something for the way it's supposed to look and the way it's supposed to be. Yes, and then they, they give us this little thing right here. Santa Clara County. I oh, voted. really? We didn't get one of those. Hmm. No, yeah. I didn't get one either. Yeah. Actually, it's really good, though. You know, they, they do a good job. They, they tell you the differences from this year of drop-off boxes. Mm -hmm. They give you all the drop-off boxes and all of the voting areas because mm -hmm. they changed our voting area from the school over to the community center so they yeah. really they did a good job yeah they, they 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 put all the drop-off places for texas on a post-it note <laughs> yeah well, Char charlie's got one right <laughs> i just got one 50 mile round trip hey. oh, you're kidding no they they're doing one no. they're doing one Upper per county, county. Uh, in the county, where do you? What, what's the county in which you live? Uh, well, actually, I'm 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 in Williamson County in Northwest Austin. Now, how many people are in that county? Do you figure? In that county, in Williamson County, is only probably about three hundred thousand. Okay, they have one for Harris in County, Houston. which is Houston. One for Houston, and Houston in land is one of is I think the second largest city in the United yeah. States in land. Okay, Mass. what's yeah. number one? Anybody know what number one is? Anybody? I know San Diego is pretty good, big. I think it's Jacksonville, Florida. Nope. No? Oklahoma City. Oh, oh okay. Hmm. Oklahoma City yeah, is the largest city that. in America in land size. But anyway, uh, the, and, and like something like four million people or something in Harris County. Almost one five. One drop-off box. What <laughs> state is in Oklahoma? What state is in Oklahoma? <laughs> yeah, because Oklahoma City is, is there's two. It's in Oklahoma. Places it's in Oklahoma. On one side. No, no, no. You're thinking. One state. No, you're one thinking of can You're thinking. I think of Kansas, Kansas City. City. Kansas City. Yeah. Yeah. Kansas Oklahoma's Kansas. in the middle of the state. It's, there's Kansas <laughs> City, Kansas, and there's Kansas okay. City, which is right okay. next to it. And I've been in that city. And you go through two different states going through the city. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you were close, though. You were close. Yeah, why not? Why not? Hell, you had a stroke. What? We, we'll forgive. That's right. I had a stroke. We'll forgive anything. How you doing, By Kevin? The way, oh, wait a minute. They're what? actually waiting in line to drop off their ballots. Some people had to wait two hours oh, God. just to drop off their ballot. Oh. Yeah, and so there's ours, just one for every county. And how how often are they picking that up over here? Because we have so many, but it's like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday they pick up mm -hmm. uh, until the the 16th of October. Then they'll do it daily. So they must do it hourly for that oh, one. They're doing, yeah, they're doing it multiple times a day. Yeah. Jeez. Well, I mean, I, what I saw in Texas, and I, I saw you raise your hand, Tom. We'll get to you in a second. What I saw in Texas on TV was that they, what the reason it's so slow. Is they have to check everybody's ID, ID. against the ballot, 
which really slows the process up. You know, yes, Tom. I was just saying, yeah, getting back to California Bell, I haven't gotten mine yet, but one of the people I work for uh, got hers, so I was helping her review it today. Um, but you know that uh, Kanye West is actually on our ballot. Shame on you people. Uh, California. <laughs> Shame. Uh, yes, this difference. He's on the vice presidential. Yeah. He, he's, he's, he's considered a, a, a vice presidential candidate. Yeah, he's on the American Independent oh, Party. Really? Okay, wait a minute. There, there we, we are. are. There we are. Yes, on the American Independent Party. And, and you know and, the origins of the wait, American... wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Who's the who who is the candidate though? I'm looking I'm trying to look at it. It's Rocky right. something. Rock, Rocky. Rocky Del Fuente Guerrera. Fuente. Yeah. And then Kanye he... Omari West. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> what so, what party so, is that? Which party is so, that? The American Independent Party, which yeah. was founded in 1968 by George Wallace. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> yes. Really? It was, it, so he could I seem to remember that. That's when he ran for president. Right. And American he had his own party. American Independent is different. Mm. Yeah. So that, yeah, was, they made, that was his party. And, and, and it still exists. Basically, yeah. how, this, how they stay on the ballot is when people register to vote, they say, I don't want to register in any party. But they think they see independent. He says, "Oh, I'm registering as an independent." Oh, <laughs> independent oh. is different. And than that's American. how they stay on the ballot because people just think that that they're registered with no party. Independent I had is different than American Independent. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's an actual actual party, and it's yeah. you know, right wing. Remember, they said they said what party was Kanye West on, and they said that he was on the birthday party. Yeah, that's the party he created <laughs> for. Yeah, the birthday party. <laughs> Is anybody taking Kanye West seriously? Himself. Yeah, I mean, on a, on a certain day, when yeah. he takes his meds. Well, in a way, I guess we. I, I mean, I, I think it's a, a sort of amusing, but but uh, unfortunately, because he, he's obviously a person that's having some mental problems, I, I think it's sort of difficult. We don't want to laugh at that. I mean, no, he, he's but, he's seriously bipolar, but that's that's a sad thing. But he's um. <laughs> What yeah, do you mean? He, he lives in both Antarctica and the Arctic? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's bipolar, yes. <laughs> Got it. He, uh, boy, well, yeah. Well, and he's not on steroids either. He's just, you know. <laughs> oh, boy. Our, our super medicated president. I, 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 who is this quack who is his doctor? <laughs> I mean, I'm just, and I'm saying this because no responsible doctor would be making the statements this doctor is making. He's going to be ready Saturday to go to some place. What? He has COVID. He He's can't even he can't, hmm? quarantine. He can't even pass a test right now. <laughs> what you know? Come on. It, 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 I, I can't believe this doctor must be just trying to keep him happy, you know, because he bullies everybody around him to do his bidding, mm -hmm. and he's yeah. making them do his bidding in this particular case. And, and, and he he's having everybody sign NDAs too. The well, NDAs that, that he's, well that that that, he, that was the really weird one, Kevin. Yeah. He made him sign an NDA when they took him over to Bethesda for because he, he had some kind of an incident. We don't know what it is. Some people are saying he had a minor stroke. Okay. Last November, yeah. Last mm -hmm. November. He made them sign non-disclosure agreements, not realizing that doctors, by their Hippocratic oath, already have signed a non-disclosure yeah. agreement because no doctor is permitted to let anyone else know unless stated by the uh, by the patient what the condition of their patient is or what the diagnosis is uh, and uh, he had him sign you know he had a lot of people sign them and a lot of people didn't sign them too uh, yeah yeah uh, but anyway so I mean, uh, but you, you've got a doctor here who is in the Navy, and he's treating the commander-in-chief. 
And so the commander in chief can tell him what the diagnosis is going to be or tell him what to do. And he goes, has to go, aye, aye, sir. <laughs> it's not like he suddenly, the doctor in him comes out and he says, I'm sorry, I can't do that because I'm a doctor and I have to look out for your best health. I think basically Trump is killing himself. Oh, yeah. You know, he's being a, the worst of all possible patients. You know. Yeah, he'll just risk anything to, to get the nomination again. Well, he has the nomination. Well, I mean, yeah. The, to, to get reelected. Yeah. From everything I've read, this isn't Hillary. This is a whole different situation. And his chances of winning are about nil. Would you agree with that, Tom? We haven't talked to you in a well, while. Well, I, you know, I, I'm. I don't want to make any predictions. You know, <laughs> my last prediction was that the Republicans were going to dump him before the, the midterms, and that obviously mm -hmm. didn't uh, come out to pass. Well, well, I'll just say, I'll just say this: I am doing everything in my power right now to to make him a one-term president. I was on the phone in Arizona just last night. Yeah, and I was really, really, you know, really pleased that the people were actually answering their phones. And actually, I, I didn't get a single Trump person on the phone. Uh, I, I got a whole bunch of people really supportive. I got one person that, that was on the fence. And uh, I was able to talk to her. And she, and, and she was like saying, oh, there's so much negativity on both sides. I said, mm, not really. <laughs> you know? Well, there, there is. I think, I think I might even turn her, you know, but we ended the call. But I was, I, I'm really, I'm really very, very optimistic. But I still don't, I don't want to take anything for, cha for, for, for granted. We got to work. And we no, we can't, we can't, we, we can't, yeah, we can't. We, we, well, we yeah. learned our lesson four years ago. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we, we uh, look, all of us expected to wake up the next morning with Hillary Clinton as president, okay? And, uh, you know, as I say, I woke up girlfriend in the middle of the night, and she said, uh, well, who won? And I said, Trump. And she kind of laughed at me and said, okay, now really, who won? <laughs> and I said, no, he won. And she went, oh, my God. Now, then yeah. I made I made a statement which... Uh, I probably shouldn't have made. She said to me, well, we're really in trouble now. And I said, look, give the guy a chance. We don't know. <laughs> you know, sometimes people do things to get elected. And once they do, they suddenly realize they have the gravity of the job and the responsibility, and they take it seriously. And let's not try and figure out ahead of time what this guy's going to do. And I'm here tonight to say, I was wrong. As I remember, mm -hmm. before the election, you were asking the question, do you think he might be a closet liberal? <laughs> oh, I don't. I, I think that that's still a possibility, although he, he doesn't, he has no politics. He's, he, ag, ag, politically, he's an agnostic. No, uh, politically, it's, it's all B. Yeah, I mean, but but I mean, if he, he felt he, his it, only interest is himself. If he Anything felt being, a, yeah, elected. if he felt that being a liberal would be in his best interest, there you go. He would be a liberal. He just knows that he could have never gotten nominated by the Democratic Party, but there were enough morons in the Republican Party that he managed to pull it off. Mm. Okay, you know, uh, but. Uh, people say to me, well, do you, do you wish him dead? And I go, no, I, that I don't, you know, that would not be right. But I do wish him to live, and I wish him to live so he can see the most resounding loss any human being has had at the polls for president in this country in the last two centuries, okay? I just want to see that. Uh, uh, I want to, because he hates losing, yeah. And the thing that would hurt him most is to lose. I'm just afraid he's not going to make it to Election Day because he's doing all these stupid things. You know, if I've got COVID and they've given me all this medication and I maybe do feel better, I'm still going to lie in bed. Listen, I lie in bed when I got a headache, <laughs> okay? 
but I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I, you know, do okay. He's done none of that, you know. Yeah. In a way, I hate to say this, he doesn't deserve to live because he's done nothing to make himself live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the, the scary part of it is is his supporters. I, and, of course, you know the, the, the situation with the arrest of these people trying to, to kidnap uh, Governor Whitmer uh, today. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if Trump dies, which I certainly, once again, no, I don't want him to die. But if he does die in office... You know, his mm-hmm. his supporters are going to say, oh, the deep state killed him. You know, we got to, you know, it's time to, you know, take up arms and revolt. And uh, that's that's the scary thing for me to think about. I, here, I here, here's my that. question about that kidnapping of the governor of Michigan, in case nobody heard about it today. Six guys were arrested for plotting uh, to uh, uh, kidnap the governor of Michigan, who wasn't well-loved because of her close, by some people, these people, because she closed down the state when COVID hit. I'm sorry. She was just trying to save your lives, okay? Uh, But they were going to kidnap her. Now, my question is, when you kidnap somebody, don't you do that for ransom? Don't you do that because you want something to be affected or do, you know, if you want to kill her, you just kill her. But they were going to kidnap her. What were they going to hold her for ransom for? Well, More, I read they were going to huh? cut her on trial. Oh, they were going to yeah, they were going to hold a mock trial in a basement. Supposedly overthrow the government. They said. Yeah, that's what they said. They were going to overthrow the government. Go, They're going to overthrow the probably the <laughs> the Michigan government. You know what, where do, where do people get this hubris? I mean, I I my answer of course is obvious. They oh. get it for they get it from Trump. I mean, well, those those people that were out there with their guns uh, and everything else too. They were out there on the on the steps of the Michigan Capitol with their guns and yeah, complaining that they couldn't buy paint. <laughs> yeah. I I told them to take back Michigan. I'll tell you the stupidest people I've seen are these. I hate I hate to use the term, but I'm Jewish, so I can use it. The those yids out in Brooklyn, (laughs) the Orthodox Jews, uh, the Mishkites, uh, who are uh, 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 demonstrating because they don't like the regulations the governor is putting into effect in their area where there's been this outbreak of coronavirus, where the rest of the state, without them being put into the statistics, is about a 1%, which is low, uh, of infection. And that's on 100, they, what did they say he did? What did he say they did? A hundred and like 4,000 tests yesterday. But anyway... Uh, without those, we're 1.2. We're like a 1.5 adding those in. In those areas, it's 5%. So he decided we got to do something about this. Please do not congregate hmm. like Orthodox Jews don't want to congregate. If you <laughs> are going to congregate, wear masks. I guess, I don't know, the masks don't fit over their beards. Wait a minute, have you got a mask there, uh, Kevin? Yeah, you you have the average. I would say you have the average beard for uh, an Orthodox Hasidic <laughs> Jew. Would you, would you put that mask on and let's see if it fits over your beard? You know, no, it doesn't. Really, it doesn't. No. <laughs> well, you, well, well, no, you don't have to cover the beard. You just have to put it on. Like yeah. You like oh, this? Open ace. Yeah, but 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 there you can do that. You know. Yeah. Right, but they don't. They, no, so, out down through here. so w- what do these morons do? They're all there in their long coats, the hats, the payas, and everything, burning masks, burning Use it masks. Use as a chin diaper too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Well, that was <laughs> South Park. <laughs> or yarmulke. Yeah, going off masks. I'm up, up, yeah. upside down. Oh, upside down. <laughs> <laughs> that means emergency. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> distress. There's yeah. my mask. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Well, 
you know, I mean, I just, I just, I just find this whole thing about we don't want to wear a mask. My constitutional right not to wear a mask. I don't want to. Look, I don't like wearing a mask outside. It's not, you know, I could I, every now and then if there's nobody at the, uh, too uh, within distance of me, I pull it down a little bit so I can get a good breath of fresh air. But this is what we got to do for the time being. And if every person watching me right now, well, I can't solve the problem. That's only three people. But if everybody who can come within the sound of my voice, uh, if, you all, if everybody in America wore a mask for a month when they went out, we'd kill this thing. We'd strangle it. But you're not doing it. I, my neighborhood, I just looked it up today to see if we're on the list of, you know, infected areas and it said no you're clean your your area i have no idea why because i go down the street and i see people without masks all the time i saw two cops without masks you know and i'm thinking to myself you know it all comes down to one thing you don't respect me you know i'm respecting you but you're not respecting me and it, it's, uh, I, just, I just find the fact that it's even become a political question. This is a public health question. It has nothing to do with right or left or up or down or whatever. It has to do with public health. And, of course, this little item manufactured by Kevin's uh, organization. Brian's. Brian, uh, Kevin. Brian's. <laughs> uh, excuse me, I'm getting old. Uh, and they put their little stuff in there, and this is where how you test it, right? You put it in a machine. Is that what happens? Yeah, a sample goes in there, and that's what they do for the second test. So when they say the PCR test, that's what they're using. Oh, I see. It, it, it's the gold standard. It, it's more dependable, but, you know, everybody wants these quick Abbott 15-minute tests, but they need to go back to the PCR just to make sure that they're accurate. Now, your company makes these? Yeah, we we do the plastic mold injecting for all those parts, and then yeah. we put everything together. We make the chemicals up in Washington. We make everything for that over the last, I've been there 15, 16 years now. But, yeah, over the last 10 years, we went and started buying companies, so we're in control of all of our stuff. Your company, I mean, we've got a big crisis going on in the country. Is your is your company making a large amount of money off of all of this, or are they not? <laughs> I mean, are they? You just saw. I just saw your company on the news. I can like, give you the answer. Right? Well, no, yeah, what, they're the on reason... Channel Two, I guess, the other night. Yeah, too. they're on yeah. Channel Two for that new test, the four and one test. Yeah, so we have we have the we have the flu test, we have a couple flu tests, and we have the coronavirus corona test. So um, now we have one test that will differentiate all four of the major flus that come every year. So now they yeah. can just buy one cartridge and they can figure out what you have. So it's it's. Oh, good. that's really good. That's really good. So I imagine yeah. I imagine you're uh, cleaning up. That's why, yeah, we're <laughs> building the new facility in, in Newark, and then we're building a new facility in Lodi, and then we're going cool. trying to and, and India to be more uh, point of care. Yeah, so that's why I've changed my job now for the last since coronavirus hit me. I got out of manufacturing, and I'm all in the new project expansion. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, you 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 got with well, do, do they give you a points in the company at all? I mean, you, well, I'm asking you because I may have to, I may have to, hit, I may have to hit you up for money in a couple of years. I want to know if you're the guy I should talk to. Yeah, but you have to move back over here. I'm not paying for you over there. Oh, I want to okay. see you hang out. <laughs> Right. You know, no, yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we broke huge records, just huge amount. Yeah. And, and, and we're doing very good. Yeah. But it, it, it's, but, it's a good business to be in before we did a lot of TV work, very good work uh -huh. with Bill and Melinda Gates foundation. And, and here we are in where we wanted to be all this time in, in a crisis like this to help, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, of course you're a profit making organization. You're in it for the money as well, but you're not, I'm sure you're not uh, overcharging for what you're doing. Oh, no, 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 no. And the stories that we hear and we we get to hear from doctors and, geez, we get, we're getting these pictures from doctors that are, like, clapping for us and stuff like that because they're getting their tests. This is when, you know, coronavirus was first hitting. Mm -hmm. We keep getting these pictures sent from all these doctors all over the world saying, thank you, Cepheid, so much. Yeah, it's really, really you know, heartwarming, all the stories we hear. Well, I mean, you know, you're, you're in the... It, it, let me put it this way. I don't think your company was ever in the business to see a crisis like this happen. Right. You know, 
But once it did, of course you're going to make money out of it, but at the same time, you've developed the methodology to be able to, to do this. Are these quick tests or are these do these take a couple yeah, of days? Yeah, they're thirty six minutes right now. The new the new one for the four is thirty six minutes. So in other and words, like I said, it's, yeah, yeah, like I said, it's it's much more accurate too. Do they do they? Do they this is no. They're using Abbott at the White House, right? For the quick one, yeah. So that's the quickie to get you in, right? They do that in ten minutes. They can see if you're positive, so they can they want that just to get you in. But then if you do have a problem then they want to reassure it with yeah. ours how's everything in your neighborhood tom are you uh, you're taking all the precautions right because you know you yeah, ain't you yeah. ain't i think our our city's doing quite well i i just heard uh, the mayor uh, give a an update the other night he said our effectivity rate is about one and a half percent so that's like good that. that's good well, one is really great but one and a half is fine you know yeah 16 I mean, yeah. where in Wisconsin, where Patrick is, I'm worried about Patrick now. Although he's he's not worried, you know, Patrick. You know. Yeah. But uh, I, Wisconsin has been hit hard. I mean, they've got a situation like we had here in New York where there's no more room in the hospitals for all of this. They had to open up, I think, a gymnasium somewhere or someplace to, to put in like a thousand beds because of the anticipation of what's going to happen. So Wisconsin, this wasn't one of your hot spots at one point, but it is now. You yeah, because they forced the governor to open up the state. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it it it. Uh, I I just feel real uh, uh, bad for any state that's got these problems, and Texas is in terrible shape right now. Um, they just opened up the bars. Yeah, and Florida. I mean, they just uh, Florida's opened up the bars, the restaurants, the gymnasiums, everything, and they've still got something like a ten percent infection rate. The the gov the uh, the governor was allowing the Miami Dolphins to open up their whole stadium for sixty five thousand people. Yeah. Is Sitting he side by side. They're going to catch dolphins, The Dolphins actually said no. Okay. Again, this has nothing to do with politics, really. It has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with caring about saving lives. And when you do something they, like that... They, they, they limited it to 13,000 people. Totally guess, so. irresponsible. So the last question I have tonight, we got about a minute. Do you think the President of the United States, we should evoke the 25th Amendment on him? Yes. Because yeah. right now, with all that gunk he's got in his body, I mean, you can see it. He's like over exuberant about everything oh i'm going to give everybody in america exactly the cocktails i'm taking right now because uh, for free it's a well, cure didn't, um, yeah didn't, uh, yeah didn't uh, nancy pelosi announce today she's going to start a congressional investigation on on his fitness well i mean he's acting erratic i mean when he decides uh, yeah. one night when he decides one night that he's going to uh not allow uh, uh, coronavirus relief to happen until he's elected governor, I mean, he's elected president again. Uh, and then the next day, I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, he's erratic, but that's really erratic, you know. So I said erratic, not erotic. <laughs> you can explain that to her in about another 10 years, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. Hello, Adrian. How are you? There's our we. Uh, there's our uh, trophy girl. We, we she passes out the uh, trophies here on the program, <laughs> and uh, she loves to pose. She just loves to pose, doesn't she? She's such uh -huh. a ham. Look at that, uh, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> I was gonna say, isn't that so much better than the thing we used to have in that square a while back? Anyway. <laughs> Jeff, oh, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> Brian, thank you. Charlie, thank you. Tom, thank you. Kevin, thank you. And thanks also to uh, a very large audience who's watched this show tonight. Thank you as well. I really appreciate it. Uh, everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back. There we go. Goodbye, Adrian. See you later. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, up next, uh, Jack Bishop does a thing called The Intersection. 
He takes calls for the citizen panel, but he uses Skype. He doesn't use Zoom like we use, but we will, uh, uh, one day we'll teach him how to use Zoom, and then he can use Zoom. And uh, it's very simple, Jack. But anyway, and that's it for tonight. We're through. Uh, so stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next. I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in the light, 1030 Eastern Daylight uh, Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, be safe out there and wear a mask. Not for you, for them.